Hello and welcome back to the channel everybody. Yes, slightly different video in this week's uh, episode. We are going to be looking at the Atoto car stereo and the reason behind that is I need a rear reversing camera. Um, and again, I'm, I'm wanting to be able to see when I'm hitching up um, when we're leaving site. Again, I can clearly see where the tow bar is, how close I am and, 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 and getting that sort of making that process a lot easier. Um, yeah, unfortunately, Louise isn't much of a help there. She keeps on sort of giving it all this and all this, and I'm not sure what she's referring to when she's doing this. Um, so um, yeah, I thought I would uh, invest in one of these, see how we get on, and I will go through the process of installing that. Never done a car stereo. Um, so yeah, I'm sure there'll be a bit of learning along the way. Um, and again with the electrics and plumbing the camera in and all that kind of thing so um, yeah hopefully yeah you find this beneficial in terms of that process and um, yeah I hope you enjoy it so this is the kit um, there will probably be a number of items that you need to get um, additional to actually the actual stereo itself um, as this is going into a VW T5, I needed to get a different um, face mount for obviously what was in there at the moment because it's a, a single um, height uh, stereo, not a sort of double um, stacker. Um, you probably will need a, uh, a new loom that converts from your existing over to the, the new stereo, which is what I've purchased here. Um, this is about £12, this was about £12. Um, the camera itself, obviously that has a wiring loom that you're going to need to be able to th uh, feed through from the wherever you install it, but obviously in this case it'll be the tailgate going through to the van up to the front unit. Um, it's got a number of different um, looms that it comes with as standard, so you shouldn't need to do anything in terms of it connecting to your uh, the stereo itself. You should be able to get one that connects up from this part. So again, that's, that's there. And then the stereo comes with some default sort of mounts, but yeah, you will need to have a look at getting some kind of cradle to be able to actually install this um, and, and to keep it in place. The other thing just to bear in mind with the stereo is like I say, you will need to find a live feed once you've got to this sort of wiring stage. And there's a number of ways you can do that. Um, you can splice it into existing, you can use these kind of connections which are a piggyback uh, connection um, but uh, yeah as we go through the install we can um, yeah we can get to each one of those items and yeah we can see how we tackle it but um, yeah should be okay fingers crossed so I am currently waiting for a part to be delivered uh, so that should be here within the next hour and that is around that sure the cradle for this new stereo um, so as I'm waiting for that I'm going to get on and install the rear camera first uh, and then just get all the cables run through to the front just so that's sort of a, a, a job done whilst we're waiting for this other part. So first job, got to get all this trim off around uh, the window uh, to be able to sort of get to the place where I need to drill the hole, mount the camera from the outside and then run the actual cables up through the actual uh, side access and back into the van. So yeah, we'll get cracking with that side of things. So once you've got the actual back panel off to actually get to where they 
actual uh, lights are and where you want the camera to go you've got four bulbs here once you get that off you're able to get to this part which is obviously where your camera is going to go in here and what this does have is actually a pre-drilled hole here which you're able to drop out the grommet so you'll be able to get your wires through for your camera there so I'm not sure if that's what it's intended for but saves me having to drill a hole on that part so one less job so this is the trim uh, this is the camera so obviously that will go around here somewhere um, so my plan is to get a tape measure, get that mounted, screwed in place. It does come with a sticky tape to start with. So again, you can get it in the right place before you add the screws. And then I'm gonna notch a very small gap here, just enough to get this cable to go underneath, but without pinching it and causing any damage. And then that way, I won't need to drill anything sort of into this, um, because obviously you've got this kind of connection and if you were to do that, obviously you'd need quite a big hole, so by just notching it slightly, you can just get all this in place uh, and save it, save it looking messy. But uh, yeah, that is the plan of action. Okay, so that's the camera mounted in the middle. There's a little notch I was telling you about, so that will go like that. So when it's flipped around, it's nice and neat. It's not pinched too much. So again, if you need to pull a bit more cable through when you move the camera, you've got that ability. Um, so yeah, what we'll do is we'll get this all mounted back up and then we'll look at actually running the cables. There's a grommet here, so you don't need to drill anything. It'll go through that, four screws, take that bit out and away you go and then the wiring comes across here, up here, and then through to the cab. So in terms of the wires, they come around here, come down, round, and I've stuck it under this trim, and it comes back through, and then it comes obviously at the top. I wasn't able to get it into this rubber grommet, not without it splitting so i just need to put that back in and then the cables run through obviously you've got the main video cable um, feed and then you've got your ground and your reversing light that this needs to attach to you'll plumb it in and then it comes back through comes down the wire in loom it then gr grinds out there grounds out there and in terms of the reversing on the VW, it's the item in the balloon. There should be five wires, and it's the one on the end, which I believe again is green and black. And then the opposite end is your ground. So again, if you want to double check, put your reversing lights on, get a multimeter, negative on the brown, positive on the green and black. Doesn't matter if it's either way, because it will still give you a reading. Um, and then it should just be on and then you can turn it off just to make sure that you've got the correct one but yeah green and black I believe for the reverse well it works for me so yeah so that's for the rear of the cable so you need to ground use the ground and the other one is the reversing one and then the other feed obviously is the video and that's what we talked about earlier and it goes along here all the way to the front pillar and then it comes back down that pillar to get to the front and then I'm just going to take out the glove box get those cables down through the back of that and just get it all tidied up and then I can get on to eventually mounting the stereo well hopefully so when it comes to replacing the old unit the panel that normally sits here you can just get um, a plastic trim removal tool in here and just lift it up and it comes away uh, towards the window screen um, that will give you access to the two bolts that sit on top here and then this will allow this bit to move away and then that will give you access to the old stereo and that way you can get the four bolts undone and get that out the way
so as part of the requirements for the stereo you are going to have to find uh, an ignition live um, for us on a uh, VW T5 it is number 19 which I've piggybacked into um, just the other side of this um, plastic casing that's also got the connection for the camera on the rear um, as well as the stereo to give that obviously power uh, this adapter I just picked up from Halfords but obviously yeah it will be different on every vehicle so you will need to just have a quick google and just find out which fuse is the right one for you Rightio, so how far have we got? It looks a bit of a, yeah, wires everywhere. So, the mic's in, that's installed. Cables run along here, back down the pillar, back into the glove box, and then DAB, that's aerial, uh, is in. Obviously that just sticks on, and then you've got a second bit, but that's got to touch the metal frame. Um, very important you do that, otherwise that's not gonna work. Um, as, as it, properly, um, and again that runs down through. Um, I have connected up the universal adapter for this VW, so that all looks good. I'm going to run the USB out of one of the so oh, spare holes here. Uh, plugged everything in just to test fit everything, so it has powered up. Um, again, I've used. I've got the remote control for this so just make sure one thing to remember if you do get this it does come with like a natural um, dongle that has to be plugged in the back of this so just make sure that yeah you plug that in um, and then yeah you can turn this around for volume um, and the, the main thing obviously was just making sure that the camera was working so yeah you can hold the, the button down for a few seconds and it goes back to where it needs to be and the key thing is obviously the reason for I got it I can see the tow bar so again that's going to be perfect for when I'm hitching up to the caravan so what I'm going to do now is make sure that this frame is okay where it needs to be make sure that's clipped in and I'll slowly start putting this back together um, where it needs to be and make sure it's all firmed up um, and then hopefully we should be able to just fine tune this and um, that will be it completed so that's all the cables pushed back got the four screws in just to hold it in place the only thing I need to look at is the actual um, plastic bezel later on so it's all in place but this seems to be a little bit small so I just need to have a little play with that once again. So next bit, getting the frame back on, getting the top bit screwed back in and the back in place, and then that should tidy that piece up. And then we can move on to the glove box, get that in screwed in. Same with the side pillar. Get all this clip back in, front speaker, and then we should be done. But I'm um, so far so good really. As always, as I always say in all my videos, just take your time, test it all out before putting everything back. Just making sure, like say the DAB, radio, rear camera, front camera, whatever you've got set up, is all functioning. Um, and then obviously slowly put it back together. So with the feed I was just saying about the rear camera, so yeah, it will come down here into this bit. Remember it's gonna have um, the feed that will go, the main video feed that will go into the back of the head unit itself you will have a pink cable which will go into the wiring loom on the stereo and it will have rear camera and then the other wire is the ignition live that you will need to attach which remember I've attached down here with a piggyback um, fuse um, and that is crimped with the ignition live from the stereo as well so there is those two joining and then it goes into the ignition live down there so obviously when you turn the engine on uh, the ignition on obviously the, the stereo comes to life and obviously you need the rear reversing light um, 
hooked up so when you actually put the car into reverse this automatically goes to the camera um, in terms of the other cables again you'll have to find the right wiring loom online that will attach to your in this case it would have been the VW to uh, the Atoto wiring loom and again they're normally about 12 quid they're not really expensive um, and then obviously from that feed you'll be able to see and the Atoto comes with sort of um, two harnesses uh, wiring harness looms so again that will be uh, what you need for the majority of models it also comes with the extra one where if you've got lots of controls actually on your steering wheel and everything then you can wire those in as well and that's probably the last thing I've got left to do is just get some tape double sided tape so I can get I can mount that in there so it just stays nice and flush so in terms of the boot up time I will put it on doesn't seem to be too bad like I say it does have a bit of a boot up time to get to where it needs to um, obviously once you've got it connected it will um, go to your phone um, with a wireless connection and obviously whatever however you left off so it goes into Apple CarPlay in this case so yes yeah, it's, it boots up pretty quick um, obviously you've got to give it time just to get all all up together like a normal PC sort of would be so but yeah for me I, I think that's quite reasonable um, and then you can go back to your main home screen um, obviously you've got your DAB that you can go into normal um, DBA, DAB uh, Apple CarPlay you've got the Android version as well um, and then you've got normal radio depending on what you're after um, yeah, it seems quite responsive. As I said, the rear camera comes up pretty quick. But no, in response wise, it seems to be okay. Um, go through there, get your different stations. Uh, what else? Go to your radio again. You can get all those put in, and then you can have your favourite set up here, um, and then back to Apple CarPlay. And you've got all your different bits that you need: music, navigation. But no, pretty pretty impressed so far. But that, like I say, the only thing I've got to do is just this outer trim at the moment, um, and the same with the wireless control again you can use this spins around for the actual volume um, you got Siri by pressing the middle button um, you also you got your answering of your calls and everything on there um, and then if you want your rear camera you can hold that button down um, and if you have a front camera set up which has the feed 4 again you hold that one down so in this case if you hold that down so it goes to the rear camera but again yeah depends if you need that or not so far so good and install was pretty straightforward um, and like I said I've put the other USB connection up here I've got the um, trim for this so like with the boot and the light I'm probably just going to notch a corner out very slightly just so I can have that cable there and if I need to plug in I can do but um, other than that you should be good to go rightio so it's been a few days now um, since the stereo has been installed um, and yeah over impressions is actually yeah no, I'm really pleased with it it's, it's done exactly what I was hoping it would do um, like I say the, the key thing for me was the rear camera um, and that seems to work a treat uh, it, it shows me exactly where the tow bar is in terms of when I'm obviously going to be backing up to the caravan um, it's given me uh, DAB which I didn't have before 
and Apple CarPlay, which is actually pretty pretty responsive, the whole unit to be fair. When you first turn it on, obviously it's, you've got to do all the scanning as, as you would expect. You get all your DAB stations, your normal radio stations, um, linking it to your phone, that kind of thing. But after probably, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes of just going through that, it's pretty straightforward in terms of what you need to do. So we'll leave it there for this week's video. Hopefully you enjoyed the content, slightly different, um, but obviously relatable. Um, but uh, yeah, if you've got any questions, drop them in the comments below. If you haven't already, if you can consider subscribing to the channel, giving it a thumbs up, that'll be amazing. And uh, yeah, I will see you on the next one. Chisel. See you soon.